Now, in the last lesson, we looked at how we can use class selectors instead of tag selectors. And this gave us way more flexibility and allowed us to specify the styles that we wanted for individual image tags or individual HTML elements. Now, if you're looking at CSS selectors, you might also come across the ID selector. And the ID selector is a little bit different from the class selector, although they do have some similarities. So let's try an example. Inside this H1, I'm going to add an ID attribute. And this is going to have an ID called heading. Now, in order to change the style of my heading and target the heading ID, I have to specify my selector slightly differently. So let's create a new section down here called ID selectors, and I'll show you how you can select it. So remember, our ID is called heading, and in order to target it, I need to use the hash symbol, or some might call it the pound sign. And then I'm going to add the name of that ID, which was called heading, and the rest of it is exactly the same. So let's make the color of the heading blue, shall we? And let's hit save and refresh. And you can see that even though we've got the H1 still specified as having a red text color, because our ID and our class selectors are more specific, this style will override this one. And if you have a look inside the Chrome developer tools, selecting the H1, you can see that we've got the H1 color being red, but it's crossed out because the ID heading is more specific. And therefore, this is the one that we see on our website. Now, this is the same. Now, this is the same for our class selectors. For example, let's get rid of these comments to put this back online. And we can see that we're saying that all images should have a background color of red, but the bacon class should have a background color of green. And if I hit save and I refresh, absolutely nothing changes. And that's because if we have a look inside the Chrome developer tools and we select our bacon image, then you can see that the image tag selector is specifying that the background color should be red, but our bacon class overrides that because it's more specific. And this is saying that it should be green. And that is what we see on screen. So that is one similarity between classes and IDs. Now, people get very, very confused about when should you use IDs? When should you use classes? Because they seem like they're kind of similar, right? Well, one of the big differences between the two is that you can only have a single instance of one particular ID name inside a single page. So I can't, for example, go into the paragraph tag and say that this one's ID is also called heading. And you'll see that Atom gives me this error saying that heading must be unique. I can only use this ID in one place. But whereas with class, it doesn't really matter. I can say that this class is bacon. I can say this class is bacon. Everybody's class is bacon doesn't matter at all. So you would use the ID to identify elements where there is only a single one of them on a particular page. For example, there's probably just going to be one heading. Or if you had a navigation bar, you're probably only going to have one navigation bar on your website. But for the class, you can use it to group related elements that are all going to behave or have a similar style. For instance, if you had a blog and you wanted to style all the comments on the blog pages, then they're probably going to look exactly the same as each other. So they might all have the same class value. So use classes when you want to apply the same style to a group of related items and use the ID to apply a specific style to a single element on your web page. 
And some say the analogy is kind of like name versus passport, where anybody can have the same name, right? There's many, many Angelas, I'm sure, across the world, but there's only one person with my particular passport number. And that uniquely identifies me across all of the other humans in the world. So the similarities are they're both used to identify HTML elements that you want to style. And CSS doesn't actually care what you use. If I said ID equals heading here or class equals heading and applied the style, it doesn't actually matter. CSS doesn't care. The other similarity between IDs and classes, as we mentioned before, is that they are more specific than the tag selectors and any of these styles will override any tag selector styles that are applied to the same element. The other thing that you'll notice is that some of these tags have predefined CSS styles that are applied by the browser. So for example, the H1, if we have a look inside our Chrome developer tools and I select the H1, then you can see that these user agent style sheets, this comes from the browser and this is applied no matter what CSS style you put down. But if you do specify something using a tag selector inside your CSS file, for example, here for the H1, I said that the font size should be 200 pixels. And that overrides the default size for the browser. And it can be further overridden using IDs or classes. Now, the differences between IDs and classes, which is what trips up most people. And the first thing to remember is that a particular ID can only be used once on this page. So I can only have this heading ID once on this page, but I can have more than one ID. So I can say maybe this one's ID is called first paragraph, but I cannot use this again anywhere else inside the same page. The other difference is that any HTML element can have more than one class, but it can only have one ID. So what does this mean? Well, let's say that I wanted my broccoli image to be circular, then we can change the border radius as we did previously. And I can do that by adding another class to my broccoli image called circular. And if I go into my style sheet and I target this circular class, then I can specify that it's border radius should be 100%, which is going to be circular. So now that circular border radius is going to be applied to this image alongside the styles for the broccoli class. So if we hit save and refresh, you'll see that my broccoli image is now circular, but my bacon image is left completely alone. And I've implemented this by adding two classes to the same HTML element. Now, you can't do the same thing with ID. So let's add a, another ID, for example, called big. And we tried putting it down here. And let's use it to change the font size to something ridiculous like 1000 pixels. Let's hit save and refresh. You can see that all the styles for that heading ID are now removed because this is not a valid ID. You can't have more than one ID for a particular element. So that is another difference between classes and IDs. Now in practice, and when you look at CSS code in the wild, you'll see people use classes absolutely everywhere. You'll see tag selectors being used broadly to affect the appearance of HTML elements, but you'll see IDs used more sparingly. And in fact, the linter for CSS on Atom actually suggests against using IDs as a selector to change the style. Now, I don't entirely agree with that because I think there are cases where it can be useful but you do have to think very carefully when you do decide to use it. Now, the last thing that I want to show you, now the last thing I want to show you with regards to CSS selectors is something called a pseudo class. And if we have a look inside the CSS reference, 
amongst all of the different properties、um, and their keywords, you can see that some of these have a little colon in front of them, and these are pseudo classes. And this is because HTML elements can have different states. So, for example, when I hover over a piece of text or an image, that's actually a different state. And I can get the CSS to change based on the state, i.e., hovering over or not hovering over, by using these pseudo classes that have a colon in front. And the one that you'll see the most often is the hover pseudo class. And this is what it looks like. So you can select the hovered state of any HTML element in order to affect its style. So let's go ahead and do that. For our image tag, let's say that when our HTML image elements are hovered, are hovered over, or you might know it as roll over or mouse over, but when our images are in this particular state, let's say that the background color should be a maybe a gold color. Let's hit save and let's refresh our site and let's check it out. So if I go ahead and hover over my images, you can see that it changes the background color to this gold color simply by using that pseudo class of hover. So take a look at some of these properties and different ways of using selectors and use it to mess around with your website. To personalize it even more.